What is going on guys, I'm Morris Hamming, guys, brand new episode of Washington Station, the best station for Washington Football Nation. Now tomorrow is the draft, and you'll notice today I have a very similar setup to what I had first semester. And that's because, also like I said in my film review for Mortal Kombat, I might just be too lazy to get it from my truck. And the lighting in here isn't perfect for the green screen, so it wouldn't have looked the greatest. So, we're just going to roll with this, but you know what, you don't have to worry about the crappy audio from last or the bad video quality because we got the awesome G7X and this awesome Shure SM7B. So now, no more technical, we're going to get into what the video is really about, which is the draft. What could come tomorrow? Because I knew I had to make a video the day before so we could really um, plan about what is going to happen tomorrow. So I have a list of some players that I um, want to talk about for a little bit. So... What is likely for tomorrow? What is likely, or what are some dream scenarios for tomorrow? See, there's a lot of questions that come with that because I've said before, Washington is in win-now mode. We are in the a place where we have the ability to win now. We almost beat the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. So, therefore, we definitely have the talent to definitely go and compete in games. So, what does that mean for the draft? Well, really, we have to get in one of the big skill positions in which we're lacking. A lot of people say receiver. I don't think we're going to get receiver in the first round because we're just talking about first round here. We'll get into the other rounds on um, Friday. But for this round in particular, I think we go for higher skill positions where there is more of a need. And before I, prep, before I get into this, um, I do want to say... Let's welcome back Eric Flowers back to Washington. Amazing, amazing trade. We swapped seventh round picks and we don't have to pay him three million from our side. Miami has to pay him six million. So welcome Eric Flowers back to the DMV. So excited to have him back. Let's get it. Um, definitely um, going to be starting. I feel like a left guard. He was really good when he played for us back in 2019. Is one of the bright spots of that year and. Um, I'm excited to have him back and, you know, add some depth because we don't know what's going to be going on with Brandon Sheriff, um, which I'm going to get into that a little bit. And um, we also have Wes Schweitzer, who also played pretty good last season. So we got some depth there at guard and, you know, we can play tackle too. But what do I think is going to happen tomorrow? Uh, I think we got to go at one of the positions where we're lacking the most. I think we're kind of secured at safety. Oh, surprising, I'm going to say that. Uh, not 100% secure. I think we need to go after someone... Um, just not in the first round because we have Cam Curl, Jimmy Reeves has proven he can compete and you know Landon Collins has been approached to move to linebacker but we don't know exactly what's coming out of that yet so um, we don't really know what that scenario is One, but the two main positions I want to look at are linebacker and offensive tackle a lot of people saying if Devontae Smith falls to us, we automatically have to pick him. I won't argue with that. He's, you know, Heisman winner, great season at Alabama, played really good. Yeah, if if he falls to us, we need to get him. And then also I want to cover this. A lot of people saying in mock drafts, we, they expect us to trade up to get maybe Justin Fields, who our team has been very high on, or that trade Lance. Uh, and... While neither of those are bad players to get, I would love for either of those players to come to Washington. However, I don't see us trading up. Now, they, now Justin Fields could fall to us because he has fallen in the latest mock drafts. It was like a top three pick, and now I saw a mock draft where he was go, going 32 to the Bucks, which I was like, that no way is that happening. But, you know, the idea of him falling is there. And would I be opposed to it? No. Would I be opposed to us getting Najee Harris? No. Um, as receiver, you know, I think if we got Trey Lance, if we got um, Justin Fields, that would be a great quarterback to help develop the team. But I don't think we're in a position where we need that right now. I think we're more in a position where we need to get some of these positions to build around the quarterback. Because I think... I do think we draft a quarterback this year. I think that's inevitable. But I don't think it's in the early, early rounds. Maybe 
third round, somewhere around there, because we do have Heineke, we have Allen, we have Fitzpatrick, so we have a QB room pretty much set for the next season, so do you want to bring in a rookie to kind of shake that all up? I think you do, but not from the first round, because you don't want coming in thinking that they're obligated to get a lot of playing time. I think you want someone who will be willing to kind of sit back and observe more. So where do I think we're going to go? So I think if we go tackle, it's really one player in particular, and that's um, Darisol from Virginia Tech. Monster of a player, really good, um, you know, from the Virginia area, so that would be cool to add to our Virginia Tech roster. Um, you know I'm a Liberty student. We, we got Gandy Golden, but um, it's kind of cool to see a lot of people from Virginia Tech there with Tim Settle, Greg Stroman, um, Kendall Fuller, and I think there's another one, but I can't think. Logan Thomas. And so I think having Darisol would be really cool. I think he, he's a fantastic um, lineman. I've watched his tape. His tape is super, super impressive. And really, I would love for him to come and play in the burgundy and gold. I think he'd be a great addition to finalize our O-line because we want Sadiq Charles from LSU to do really good, but we don't know exactly how he will perform. So... I say we get Christian Darisol, and then you have Christian Darisol, uh, Christian Darisol, I'm blank on names, Eric Flowers, Chase Roulier, Brandon Sheriff, Morgan Moses. Now, here's the thing. If these predictions of Washington trading up to get a QB turn out to be true, the guy who I would say would be given up would be Brandon Sheriff, I think. He wants to stay in Washington, but you know the sides just can't come to an agreement. You know, Brandon Sheriff is an All Pro. You know, he's many Pro Bowls, got first team All Pro. So you know, he is a monster of a lineman, and I would love for him to come and continue playing in Washington. But you know, we have to realize the way the NFL works now. They're chasing a big deal, which looks like we were giving him, but he wasn't taking it. At least not now, and he signed a franchise tag. So hopefully, we franchised that in two years in a row, so hopefully that doesn't bite us like it did. And last time we franchised a guy twice in a row, Kirk Cousins. Man, I miss that quarterback. At least we had a stable quarterback when he was around, you know? So let's, so yes, there's that possibility. And I think if we do trade into the, more up in the first round, Brandon Sheriff is automatically in that package. But I don't think that's what we're going to do. Now the other position, there's really only two positions I see us going out there tomorrow. And there's two positions, there's two underdogs. The two underdogs are quarterback and receiver. Now, the two main positions I see us going after is offensive tackle and linebacker. Now, I've already covered offensive tackle. I think if we go that route, it's only one player that we're really looking for, and that's Darisol. Um, But here's where it gets a little more interesting. For linebacker, I see a couple of prospects we could go after. I think Jeremiah... From Notre Dame, I'm I'm going to attempt his last name, but don't kill me if I get it wrong. Jeremiah Ausu Kormoa, Ausu Kormoa. I think that's that's how I interpret it. You know, he I watched his tape. He's very impressive. A lot of people have him coming to us. I remember the very early mock drafts had him definitely coming to us, and that's what got me to go watch his tape. And I was like, oh man, this guy is so good. This guy's an amazing linebacker. He's fast. That's amazing about linebackers now. They're so fast, and that's where I agree with Tom Brady on the new number rule. I'm not a fan of it because the way linebackers and corners are built now, they're very similar. You know, it's not the big, bulky linebackers and the super slim uh, corners. These guys are all naturally big built players. So I think, yeah, there is a bit of a disconnect there where the numbers could, you know, um, make bad football, as Tom Brady would say. But there's a couple players. So one is Jeremiah Wusu Koromoa, who from Notre Dame, just very good, very just fast linebacker. He generated the second highest slot coverage of any player in the country last season. And he is a very light linebacker, so he could fly around the field. So theoretically, he and Cole Holcomb could really form a good duo of going after, you know, the running back or covering the tight end because that's what we've had big struggles with is covering the tight end. So, if, you know, linebacker of his size, that would be something he could do or covering the running back on a screen or if the running back, you know, cuts through a hole and it cuts out for a route. You need a linebacker that can for sure keep up and his speed would be excellent for that. 
and could drop back into coverage for just any, like a slot, if he needed to. Another one is Zaven Collins from Tulsa. Uh, he's a bigger linebacker, six foot five, two hundred sixty pounds, but he's still very much a physical linebacker. He's not just because he's a bigger linebacker does not hold him back by any means. He is actually still very much so a very physical, fast, big. I mean, six five. You know, that guy's big, so he would be also good for flying around and getting at the running back. And another one. This is the other main one I would see us getting. I don't see us getting Mark up Micah Parsons from Penn State. I think he would be taken by them. But one more, I think, is Jamin Davis from Kentucky. Very good linebacker. Uh, he it was the first. It was his first year as a starter last season, and he had a 81.5 run defense grade. Now we had the what one of the top pass defenses in the league last year but we didn't have one top run defenses if you remember the Seattle game they gashed us with the run so did other teams um, San Francisco their running game is what even made that game close Arizona in the beginning of the season their running game is what hurt us so we need these guys that are top grade run stoppers to really aid in that run defense if we want to be in win now mode because our defense is so good, but they just got to be just a little bit better. So to complement the offense that is still getting pieced together. And a lot of people say we got the receiver. And I'm like, well, we got Adam Humphreys. We got Curtis Samuel. We got Terry McLaurin. So I think, and you know, Dev with Gandy Gold and Cam Sims, Steven Sims. You got plenty of receivers there. So I don't think we're going after that. I think it's linebackers or offensive tackle. But, of course, they could shock us with a quarterback or receiver. But in Ron, Ron, we trust. So, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow. I'm excited for the uh, draft tomorrow. I'm going to be watching the Pat McAfee live stream that goes along with the draft, which is all hilarious. If you want to know what it's like, go watch Pat McAfee show, Jordan Love. Watch that video. Hilarious. That gets you an idea of what you'll be watching. Amazing. It's funny. And so, yeah, I hope... You all enjoy watching the draft tomorrow. I hope my predictions are somewhat correct, you know. I uh, think everyone hopes that. And, uh, yeah, I'm super excited, so let's get it. Uh, NFL Draft 2021. Excited to see players back there on the stage. And I'll be back Friday to review our first-round pick and talk about what I see going on for the rest of the weekend. All right, please subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you like this video if you enjoyed. Make sure to hit that bell button so notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Make sure to comment your thoughts down below. I'm Morris and I'm out. Peace.